clearance, Dark Star. Somewhere over the Indian Ocean, 2.37 a.m. local time. The radio crackled. A coded voice broke through the static. Calm, precise, chilling. Blackbird, this is Sentinel. We have confirmation. Authorization, shadow protocol. Proceed to ignition. You are cleared for Operation Eclipse. The pilot didn't respond right away. He just stared through the cockpit canopy, out into a moonless sky. No stars, no clouds, just black. This wasn't a training run. This wasn't a simulation. This was it. The kind of mission that Dark Star is go. Far below the horizon, news anchors were waking up to a very different story. The B-2 Spirit, they said, was being deployed. The stealth bomber, the 30,000-pound bunker buster, the flagship of American deep strike capability. But that was just the headline. A diversion, a smokescreen. Because while the world watched B-2 Spirits taxi across a floodlit runway in Diego Garcia, something else was already in the air. No transponder, no call sign, no record. Dark Star. It launched without roar, just a hum, the sound of power folding space in half. And as it ascended past the B-2s, their formation spread like wings, a shield, a veil, a decoy. One of the B-2 pilots cracked a private channel, voice low. Hope you packed light, Ghost Rider. No reply. Dark Star doesn't talk. It just disappears. Chapter 2. The News. Was it really the B-2? The headlines were loud, but something felt off. The U.S. Air Force had just unleashed a wave of strikes over Yemen. Every anchor said the same thing. B-2 Spirit bombers, deployed from Diego Garcia, had delivered a brutal warning, possibly dropping the 30,000-pound GBU-57 bunker buster, America's most powerful non-nuclear bomb. But then, silence. No Pentagon confirmation, no satellite craters, no ground-shaking impact. And behind closed doors, defense insiders whispered the truth. No mops were dropped. Two U.S. officials told the war zone nothing that big was used. The real targets? Still standing. Tunnel complexes? Intact. There were no massive impact signatures. No ground collapse. Just clean precision. Too clean for a mop strike. So what hit them? What aircraft pierced enemy defenses, struck fortified bunkers, and left without a trace? Some experts raised the question, what if it wasn't a B-2 at all? What if the B-2s were the mask, but something else wore it? The deployment of six B-2s to Diego Garcia made headlines, but the payload they're certified to carry, the GBU-57B, is rare, limited, and reserved for bigger targets, like hardened bunkers in Iran. Would the U.S. really spend a bunker buster on Houthi tunnels? Or was it something else doing the digging? And deny it either. And in the world of black ops and ghost planes, denial is part of the mission plan. Chapter 3. Dark Star in Operation. The skies over Yemen weren't empty. They were alive, watching, listening, hunting. Since late 2023, the Houthis had built a kill zone unlike anything ever seen from a non-state actor. Backed by Iran, stitched together with Soviet hardware and Frankenstein missile tech, the airspace over Yemen had become a sensor-snarled graveyard for American drones. Over 22 MQ-9 Reapers shot down. That's not a defense network. That's a trap. And now, Dark Star was flying straight into it. Bark 2 missiles were standing by, radar-guided killers with 70 kilometers of reach and infrared backups. Sakur-1-358 missiles loitered in lazy orbits. Quiet predators, scanning for heat, waiting to strike. Thaqib missiles, hacked together from MiG-29 air-to-air -air weapons, were pointing skyward on mobile launchers. And in the shadows, passive radar sniffers, electro-optical sensors, IR scopes, all queued in for the moment something broke stealth. But that moment never came, because Dark Star didn't arrive like a plane. It arrived like a phantom, flying at hypersonic speed, Mach 6 or more, 
It didn't evade detection, it outran it. By the time the Bark Fire Controlled Radar lit up, Dark Star was already gone. By the time a 358 missile found a heart trace, Dark Star was behind it, and the Thaqib? It was aiming at ghosts. Dark Star didn't jam the battlefield. It didn't engage. It didn't taunt. It used silence as armor. Flying nap of the earth, skin cooled to nearly ambient temperature. No emissions, no radar returns, no predictable flight path. It wasn't in the airspace, it was through it. Somewhere deep in the Yemeni mountains, beneath a camouflage of sand and steel, a Houthi command node went dark. It didn't explode, not at first. It imploded, because the bomb Dark Star dropped wasn't smart. It was surgical, and no one heard it coming. The cockpit was silent, save for a single breath. Then the voice broke through the encrypted channel. Blackbird to Sentinel. Objective neutralized. No visual, no sound. All clear. There was a pause, then a calm reply. Copy that, Blackbird. Spirits are inbound for after cover. Fade into the dark. The pilot didn't answer. He just pulled back the throttle. Dark Star banked left, engines ghosting, slipping into the night like it was never there at all. Above him, three B-2s pierced the upper atmosphere, the visible lie to protect the invisible truth and feed the story. News cameras locked into their every move, chasing the distraction. But the kill shot? That was delivered by something the Pentagon won't confirm, the Air Force won't list, and the world still doesn't know exists. And somewhere, in a briefing room that doesn't officially exist, someone marked a red X on a digital map and smiled. Chapter 4. Dark Star, Built to Disappear They called it a proto-Blackbird, a direct descendant of the iconic SR-71. The SR-72 is America's next-generation hypersonic weapon, and Dark Star is its shadow made real. Mach 6 Plus capability, unmanned or optionally crewed, a range of over 5,000 miles, a mission profile that includes reconnaissance, deep strike, and hunter-killer precision in the most heavily defended airspaces on Earth. Its power comes from a combined cycle engine, turbojet for takeoff, scramjet for the sky tear, developed under black budgets with $140 million in DARPA funding, and optional costs projected to break $1 billion. This platform was never meant to fight in the open. Its projected $200 million per unit cost wasn't a limitation. It was a signature, a weapon not for every war, but for the war no one is supposed to know happened. Dark Star may not be officially labeled SR-72, but every line of its silhouette, every blackened seam of its titanium skin, whispers its origin. Flight testing reportedly began in the early 2020s. Skunk Works confirmed ground tests in 2023, and insiders believe a scale demonstrator has already flown, perhaps even over Yemen, under the cover of B-2 headlines. In short, Dark Star is what happens when the world's fastest aircraft gets rebuilt for the 21st century battlefield. Unseen, unreachable, unstoppable. While the world races to build hypersonic missiles, the U.S. built something scarier, a reusable hypersonic ghost that can strike and vanish, monitor and guide, pierce and escape. And when the SR-72 and its kind finally come out of the shadows, from the U.S., China, Russia, the skies will change forever. Because the next war won't be fought at subsonic, it'll be hypersonic, and Dark Star's already there. Chapter 5. The Aftermath You won't find it in the Pentagon press briefings. You won't see it in satellite images. And the White House will never speak its name. Because if the United States admitted what really flew over Yemen that night, war wouldn't just be a possibility, it would be inevitable. Iran, Russia, China. A provocation. A declaration. They'd move missiles, fleets, alliances. So the U.S. did the only thing it could. Bury the truth under the wings of the B-2. Let the world believe it was a known bomber with conventional bombs. Let the headlines run wild with talk of 30,000-pound bunker busters and strategic signaling. Because that lie kept the peace. But the real message didn't go unnoticed. 
In Beijing, Moscow, and Tehran, the silence was deafening. Their generals saw past the news reports. They read between the lines, and they realized something had changed. They saw the impossible radar gap, the precision that shouldn't be possible, the lack of any post-strike signature, and they understood. The next era of warfare had arrived, and it came without a sound. Now the arms race had a new leader behind schedule. Subscribe if you're ready to follow the next chapter of this unseen war. Like this video if you believe the truth is always airborne, even if no one will confirm it. Because when the world's quietest weapon moves again, we'll be right here to tell you what they won't.